Hello, my learning friends. In today's short episode, we're going to take a commonly used term from world history and proceed to knock it out of the park. Scurvy. I'm most excited to cover this term because it gives me a chance to talk like a pirate. Scurvy. I am a pirate. Although pirates were not the only victims. And while it may be fun to say, scurvy, 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 it certainly was not fun to have. So what is scurvy? Scurvy is simply a disease caused by a deficiency of vitamin C in the human body. Now, in nature, in most cases, we humans have the advantage, you know, like the whole opposable thumb thing, you know. But there's one evolutionary advantage we missed out on that most animals have, the ability for our bodies to naturally create its own supply of vitamin C. We get our fix mainly from citrus fruits, oranges, strawberries, lemons, but we also find vitamin C in lots of other categories of food as well. Now, after only a few weeks of depriving yourself of vitamin C, you're gonna to start to lose your red blood cells, and then your teeth are gonna start falling out. Then your hair is gonna to start to fall out. Then you're gonna bleed from your skin, go insane, then you're gonna die. Yeah, not pleasant. Now today, scurvy is pretty rare mainly affecting those in developing countries, those in refugee camps. Alcoholics are also at risk, as well as those with mental diseases or you know, unusual dietary habits. But back in the day, scurvy was the disease as common as they come. Now, since the beginning of the 20th century, pretty much the whole world knew what scurvy was and how to avoid it. But the same cannot be said about its victims throughout the ages, and especially during the age of exploration from 1500 to 1800, where it is estimated that scurvy claimed the lives of more than 2 million sailors. But scurvy symptoms were first recorded as early as 1550 BCE by the ancient Egyptians, and the Greek father of medicine, Hippocrates, described scurvy symptoms nearly 2,500 years ago, around the same time that the Chinese monk Faxian reported the use of ginger on ships was being used to prevent it. But without Facebook, without Twitter, this life-saving knowledge was repeatedly lost and then found and then lost and then found all the way up until the 1900s. Now, the largest death tolls due to scurvy were during the long sea voyages undertaken during the age of exploration. Now, some of you may have heard of Ferdinand Magellan, the famed Portuguese explorer who created a trade route, the first one, between Europe and India. In 1520, you might not know that out of 230 of his sailors, 208 died mainly due to scurvy. During the 1700s, scurvy killed more British sailors than wartime action. And one more example which blows my mind. During the Seven Year War, the British enlisted nearly 185,000 sailors, out of which 133,000 died. The main culprit? Yeah, scurvy. And even though throughout world history, there was overwhelming anecdotal evidence that citrus cured scurvy, Science was not able to validate that fact until the turn of the 20th century, where literature became widely available and known throughout the world. And hence, no more sailing unless you have a big jar of lemon juice. Bang, bang, that was a fast one. So you better go take that test or write that essay before you forget everything that I said. And I would recommend washing down that fast meal of learning with a big glass of OJ. And once again, thanks for tuning in for another Hip Hughes video. If you haven't checked out the video arsenal, you can find it in the description below where you'll find more than 400 videos of my collection nicely organized into neat, tidy draws of learning. And please take a second, whether you're a teacher, a student, or a lifelong learner on the YouTubes, to click that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you know when new videos come out. That would just be the cat's meow. And as always, I wish all of you love and light in your lives and leave you with what I believe is the most important lesson in life. Where attention goes, energy flows. And I will see you, my partners in brain growing, the next time you press my buttons.